We're back with a central question from the George Zimmerman trial. How did a jury that was divided at the start ultimately decide to set him free? Juror B-37 says initially they were split right down the middle. Three voted for not guilty, two voted for manslaughter, and one voted for second degree murder. But after hours of debate, Juror B-37 told CNN that they convinced the woman who voted for second degree murder to shift her vote to manslaughter. It became very confusing. Um, we had stuff thrown at us. We had um, the second degree murder charge, the manslaughter charge. Then we had self-defense, stay on your ground. Um, and I think there was one other one. Um, but the manslaughter case, we actually had gotten it down to manslaughter. But the jury was still divided, and that one jury was still convinced of George Zimmerman's guilt. There was a holdout, and probably, well, we had another vote, and then everybody voted, put it in a little tin, we had a little tin, fold her a little papers and put it in the vote, and she was the last one to vote. And it took probably another 30 minutes for her to decide. The, this holdout was the last to vote, but she finally gave in to the majority opinion and decided to return a verdict of not guilty. So, Paul, there was a split in the jury. Your reaction? Nope. Yep. You know, I, as a prosecutor, I know the prosecutors that handle this case were listening to that and looking at that and shaking their heads in frustration because if they could have hung up that juror or had that person hold out longer to have gotten to a mistrial and then had another chance at this uh, case, uh, I, I know that's got to sting knowing that they had someone held up for so long that was finally worn down or came over to the other side. Uh, and, I, and I know that that's how they heard that information uh, when the, the juror was talking about having someone on their panel that couldn't make a decision and that was holding out and that eventually changed their mind and, joined it and voted with the rest of the jurors. Marsha, uh, juror B-37 also talks about the tough jury deliberations and reveals one juror actually wanted to leave the jury room. It was tough. Um, we all pretty much get along. Um, it's, it's hard sometimes to let other people talk at, you know, at one time and then have somebody else talk instead of adding your comments to whatever they were saying, trying to help um, figure out what we were trying to figure out. Um, at times I thought we might have a hung jury because one of them said they were going to leave. And we convinced them, no, you can't leave. You can't do this. You have been in this too long to walk out now. And, and, and Marsha, she said that this juror wanted to leave because of a personal matter. Uh, I mean, is that of concern that a juror wanted to leave and they should have brought it to the judge, or is this normal? I mean, what do you make of that? It's normal, and it wouldn't surprise me if the juror who wanted to leave was a holdout juror who was um, not appreciating the pressure and, and the situation and wanted out of it. That's, that, has, that happens actually pretty commonly, that you have one on the other side of things who is very unhappy with being pressured into going along with the group vote. Um, and so that person is going to think of a reason to get out of that jury room. Now, if she actually had uh, needed, really needed to go and really couldn't uh, keep, continue to to deliberate, then she would have had to have been removed, and an alternate would, would place her. But she obviously didn't need it that badly, didn't feel that badly enough that uh, she was willing to actually leave, and she let them persuade her to stay. But that's all in keeping, but, but, if we're but, right but, about minute, this. Let me, let me push you on that a little, Marsha. You're sure, saying sure. that possibly, and of course we know we're speculating here, that possibly the holdout juror uh, might have been the one that was voting to convict Zimmerman of the top charge of murder, too, and that maybe right. she wanted to leave because of her feeling bad about the decision and all, and that's common. Is that, is that what your speculation is? 
That is the, exactly, Reverend, that is my speculation. I'm, I'm guessing that that's the one who wanted out because she was not, she didn't like the pressure she was getting. Um, and, and, and I could be wrong. It could be somebody else entirely, but that seems logically like the most likely person to have wanted to get out. Ken Padowitz, what do you think of that theory? Reverend, this, this confirms for me these comments from these jurors that my gut reaction and my opinion from the beginning of this case that this was overcharged. It, it, they had probable cause for second degree murder, but the standard that prosecutors have to use, reasonable likelihood of conviction, really was with manslaughter. This should have been a manslaughter charge from the beginning. They should have molded their entire case on manslaughter. And based on these comments from these jurors, I think there would have been a much better chance of getting a conviction in this case with, with a manslaughter charge rather than overcharging, which is what I think the prosecutors did but here. Ken, I think it was a bad no way. prosecutorial no way. discretion. No way. Ken, they no, had no, the absolutely charge. not. They had the manslaughter charge. There was an option for them, and they were presented with both. This juror said very clearly, based on the law, they had no choice but to acquit of manslaughter and of murder. I mean, when jurors are supposed to vote, they're, con they're conscious and their convictions based on the evidence. And yes, it's also their job to negotiate their point of view with other jurors. A lot of times Times when there's a split like this, it depends on the strength and personalities of the jurors. And you can see from the interview, B37, she was very, very strong in her convictions and completely bought into George Zimmerman's story. And she was obviously yeah. a big part of convincing those other jurors. Dude, to now, go Paul, I That's go right. Back not to only that, but she said, you know, Rev, she said this juror, B37, said that it didn't matter to her yes. or any of the other jurors that there was a, a second degree murder charge on the table. It wasn't a question of overcharging. She specifically right. denied that. And, and actually, that. That probably is true. Jurors have the, the array of choices they have, and they make their decision. And like Faith said, this juror was very strong in her convictions about well, what should well, and should not happen. Well, I, I will say this, Marsha, what you and Faith are saying. This juror not only said that about those things, she kept quoting Stand Your Ground, which wasn't even in the trial. I mean, she was yeah. hearing instructions <laughs> that weren't even given. She was so uh, determined to make a decision. But, but uh, Paul, let me ask you a question. Uh, since the verdict, now I'm going back to Marsha's theory for a minute. Since the verdict, we've yeah. heard from B-37, who's doing all these interviews. We've heard a statement released from B-51, B-76, B E-6, and E-40. But we haven't heard from B-29. B-29 uh, is the one that we've heard nothing from. She's the one that is Hispanic or black, has eight children, moved in the area from Chicago, and reportedly wiped away a tear during the prosecution's rebuttal. She's the only juror that has not released a statement or said anything publicly since the trial. And she possibly could be the holdout, Paul? She possibly could. What I think is really interesting is that she did not join the other jurors who felt motivated to distance themselves from B-37, who didn't feel as motivated to articulate that she was more sympathetic to Trayvon Martin like the others. And what I would imagine from her is that she feels internally more of, more of the pressure if she does come forward to address and talk about the race issue because she has, she is a person of color. And so, you know, I don't know if that's keeping her away from the spotlight or keeping her away from releasing a statement, but as the only person on that juror that is a person of color, I have to imagine that she was aware and conscious of some of the theories that were presented in that case that maybe other jurors may not have noticed and, in fact, pushed away and said that uh, it, they were not relevant and not part of this case. And so I would imagine that all of that is creating more pressure on her, and that's part of why she is not releasing statements, she is not giving interviews, and, and none of the, the others either are actually really coming forward. No, Even they B37 made it only written still yes. anonymous, right? All right, exactly. Faith, Marsha, They're still Ken not and giving Paul, a press conference. I want to thank all of you for your time tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Still so ahead, Rachel Gentile speaks out right here on Politics Nation.